Every single one of you has a number over your head. It's floating right above your head. It's like a circle right over your head. And some of you, you're 84, right there. You're 71, 92, 68, and it's going down because I'm pointing at you. 68, 7, no, I'm joking. But you have a number over your head. And every person that you know in your offices, in your organization, every person in your home has a number over their head every single day. And it oscillates, it goes up and down, just like the stock market. It changes on a minute, an hourly basis. It changes on a regular basis. And it, and it looks like this. I mean, anywhere you walk, you go to a coffee shop, you'll see people, and their numbers will, will be there. And the number is tied to the level of peace that you're feeling at a certain time. It's your peace level. It's like, where are you at today? And that number tomorrow could be different because... We have something called chaos in our life and around us. The idea of external chaos, it affects internal peace. And over the last couple of years, in fact, Gallup has, has said that the sadness index has gone to 28% of the population. It's the highest it's ever, ever been. You can see that in, the, uh, in, in prescription drugs and antidepressants and all of those things. The level of peace is going down holistically because of things like, I don't know, have you guys heard about a war in Russia? Have you heard about this thing called COVID or the latest pandemic, of the monkeypox? Whatever the, the latest unrest is, right? The news cycle and social media and all those things affect so many people. So the numbers go down because of inflation or midterm elections or you choose the global unrest. And then there's local unrest. I mean, like... There's the frustration with a sister or a sibling or a coworker or your boss is a real jerk today and that number goes down, right? Or you pick. There's a number of issues that are local unrest mixed with global unrest. It affects the number over your head. It's your peace index. It's your peace index. And what I want to talk to you about is the idea that maturity is the ability that you have inside to develop inner peace when there is no external peace. When you can actually have resolve and resiliency, and if I make this one big statement, that our world needs resilient people. Our world needs people of resolution, leaders that are actually not distracted by the world, but they're actually mature. So what does that mean for you and for me? Well, it means that you still have a number over your head, and wouldn't you like to figure out what that number is? You guys good? Do you want to figure out what the number is? Okay, you have it. Pull out your phones. Do not look at your text, please. Pull out your phones. Go to your calculator, because arithmetic is a thing of the past, right? So I'm going to ha have you actually come up with numbers. I'm going to show you what the peace index is. It revolves around these five circles, purpose and purpose and people, and place, and personal health, and provision. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you figure out what your number is by giving you an opportunity to see it. Because what happens is most of us are around people, and we say things like this every day. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. You? Yeah, good. All right, what did we learn? <laughs> Nothing. What does that mean? All we're saying is Hi. And then, have you ever been around some people, and you're like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, not so good. And you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you're you're going to tell me, aren't you? Like, that's not what I was looking for. I was just saying hi, right? But the reality is that this peace number that's over our head, and that we all have, if we can understand where we're not at peace, and, and why there's no peace, we can do something about it. We can actually start to help people. We can actually start with some healing. We can take things out of people's life. We can call them up into who they are, and this is what this is about. So here we go. 100 is the highest. I'm going to give you a chance. It's all subjective. Your 72 might be someone else's 84. I don't care. Okay, that's your number. But where are you in these five circles? Let's start with purpose. Purpose is the culmination of who you are with what you do. It's like the work you're doing, the, the what you're doing with your hands, what you do every day, does it match who you are with what you do? How good do you feel about your purpose? Like, I'm right now at a 92%. Okay, now you can say 92.4, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.5, 92.
That's up to you. It just makes it more difficult with your calculations, but you can do it. So give yourself a number. How good do you feel about the purpose right now that you, that you are living and, and the work that you're doing? And, and so type it in, 78, 84, whatever. I've been as high as a 95. I've been as low as a 60 on purpose. And it changes on a regular basis. Now let's go over to people. People are, people are those that either make you or break you. Okay, and I have actually an assessment, it's a people assessment, where you can actually get, re- you don't want to show anyone this list, but you can analyze people, and you can say, there are 68, and there are 72, and is it going up, is it sideways, because what I found is that many of us allow other people's lack of peace to affect our peace. We've let people in to affect us in a certain way. So what number would you give the top 10 people, you know, the favorites on your phone? What would you give that number collectively? I'd say right now I'm at 88. Uh, They often say that you're only as good as your weakest kid. And so sometimes your children can actually affect where you're at. So where are you with your number? Give yourself a people number right now, one through 100. Okay, type that in. Now hit plus. We're going over to place. Place is, place is the place, the spaces that supercharge you. It's the spaces that you live in on a daily basis. You woke up somewhere, you slept somewhere, that's a space. Uh, you, you had a kitchen maybe and got some coffee, that's a space. You have a living room, you have a backyard, maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe the space is your, your community that you're in. It's the local uh, coffee house or it's the local restaurants or it's your neighborhood or it's your culmination of that with your office space. But your collection of spaces, how good do you feel right now? Give yourself a number, one through 100, 100 is highest, hit plus. Okay, we're three down, we have two more to go. Now we get a personal health. Personal health is, uh, when people think personal health, they usually think physical. It's a part of it, but personal health is mind, body, and spirit. There's so much mental health issues going on that are also tied to spiritual. You can't eliminate spiritual from mental or physical. They're all interrelated. But how good do you feel about your mental health, your physical health, your spiritual health combined? Give yourself a number. And then the last one, the last one people don't understand what provision really means. Provision though is earnings. It's what you're making. Do you have enough provision to do what you do? Meaning are you earning. Now, we have to be careful here because I'm not talking about like, yeah, what you want, but it's what you need. There's a famous uh, poet. His name was Mick Jagger. You guys know Mick Jagger? This poet. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. Needs and wants are two different things. And some of my work, I often ask people, we certify coaches and consultants around the world, and we'll meet with them, and, and I'll ask them, I say, like, well, so what are you trying to accomplish? What do, you, what, do you, what do you need? Well, I need to earn about twelve to 15000 a month. I'm like, no, 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 no. No, what do you need? You, that's what you want. You want a business that does that, but what is it that you need? And when you find out you really, you don't need as much as you think you do. But when you think about kids and spouse in college or all those different things, well, find out what your needs are and how comfortable, where's your peace level with provision. So give yourself a number, okay? So you should have five numbers in, equals, add those all up, add all five. Now divide by five. That is the number that's over your head right now. That's your level of peace. So uh, show of hands real fast, 90 to 100, we got any 90s in here? 80s to 90s, 70s to 80s, 60s to 70s, do not worry, I'm not going below that. Uh, we do have couches in the back and there's professionals that will be meeting, no, I'm joking. Some of you are like, yes, I need that. But the reality is some of us have been at 95, some of us have been lower, it tells the story of your life right now. There's a narrative. There's more to it than how are you? Eh, meh. No, how are you really? Well, I'm a 72 right now. So I want you to think about these numbers. Which one of these is the lowest? Which one is the lowest? Now that's your opportunity. That's where your peace plan comes in. You actually create a plan for yourself. 
And then which one is your driver? Uh, I found that if your driver is the lowest, it affects everything, okay? So let me tell you the story on this. My driver is purpose. It's the most important circle on here. If my purpose is off, everything else is off. So when I was living in Atlanta, our family was living in Atlanta, we were doing big events. I was running Catalyst conferences, the leader cast, and all these big partnerships with John Maxwell and Henry Cloud and all these thought leaders. My purpose started to fall because I was serving their missions, but I wasn't getting my content out. So my, my purpose started to fall. It fell all the way to a 60. When it fell, all of a sudden, I started to notice the traffic of Atlanta, which is horrible. Oh, my goodness. And then all the people I was around were all tied to other people's businesses I was managing for them. And then my personal health, I was getting stressed. My provision was fine, but that led me to make a big decision. I created a peace plan with my wife, Kelly, and I, and we decided, you know what? I think I'm done with that season. I fired myself from my own business, and I brought someone else in there, and we decided because of our peace index, it wasn't sustainable. We moved to England, and we moved to London. All of a sudden, my purpose shot back up because we're working on our work. The people were all tied to that work. The place was beautiful. Um, personal health was getting much better. The only problem is my provision went down because we were funding all that. So there's never a time and place. Always one of these is always off in some degree. But it's like, wouldn't you like to know what that is? Where is the issue and why is it there? One more story to kind of help you and give you some context. 2002, 20 years ago, in September of 2002, um, my wife and I would just had, had quit uh, a job of starting Giant. And it was the very beginning, and we went on a vacation to Mexico. We go to Mexico. At that point, my purpose was higher because I was hopeful. My people were changing because I quit my job. My place was all changing, so it was pretty low. My personal health was okay. Provision was kind of tight, but we were starting a new business. And we go, and we get trapped in Cancun in a hurricane, right? In September, it's cheaper in Mexico because hurricanes visit there too. And so anyway, we go in and have, have this great adventure and then we get trapped. And so long story short, we're on our way to the hotel to hunker down before the hurricane hits and we get hit by a drunk driver and it was a near fatal car accident. I was, my, uh, uh, my intestines were, were um, split, you know, severed my, uh, Sternum pops out, I lost, I broke seven ribs, I was bruised, every organ, and I had a short-term paralysis, and there we are in Mexico. And where's your peace index? <laughs> chaos. When chaos reigns, your peace index falls. But what was really interesting, and this was Kelly and I, we had this unbelievably strange peace because at that moment, we had a spiritual component that was bolstering a lot of the other components. And we came from that with this level of peace. And obviously, I'm walking today. Um, I had, you know, all types of, of things that happened after that. But when you come back and start looking at the parts of your life, where was your peace index 10 years ago? Where was it five years ago? Where is it today? And what's the one circle that you have control over? What's the one thing that you can do? Because when you're at peace, others can be at peace. But if you're not at peace, others feel it. And you affect their peace level. So every single Miss America pageant always says, what do you want for the world? World peace, right? We want world peace. Okay, well, what does that really mean? World peace means that you're at peace and you're at peace and you're at peace and you're at peace. And that, that peace level starts to spread like the butterfly effect and it affects each other to the degree that then the leaders start to affect each other. And when that happens, we have mature people because they have the ability to develop inner peace when there is no external peace. For me, the idea of the peace index is this concept of it's a way for you to manage your emotions so that other people don't have to manage your emotions. That's self-awareness. If you can manage your own emotions and know yourself and lead yourself, I don't have to lead you. I don't have to lead your emotions. And that's ultimately responsibility that we need in our society today. So what I've done for that, I basically have a process for keeping the peace. 
And this process is really interesting because I realized that I was a guy that let emotions and times affect me. So every morning, I do a call-up session. I remind myself my identity, who I am, my superpowers, what I'm good at. I kind of get myself ready for the day. I look for people of peace every day, and I try to be a person of peace to other people. And then every day at 5.30, I do something called the examine. I, my watch goes off, and it's like 5.30, let's go. I go, what was I thankful for today? Get myself in the right frame of mind. And then I go, where was I off? Where was I not at peace today? And so far as it depends on me, was it me or was it them? And I, I solve peace issues every single day. And then I deal with them. I might call someone and ask forgiveness or I might just process it. So by my evening, my evenings are great because I'm not thinking about things because I did it at 5.30. And then I have one last little thing I do. It's called rest in peace sleep. I know that sounds like, ooh, that's scary. But the idea of rest in peace sleep is if there's anything that made it through that filter, I actually have a theme over me at night. Uh, last night, I went to bed and I was like, the theme was bring it. That was it. So I woke up this morning to bring it to you guys. So that's the idea. Every single day, I'm managing my emotions so that every single day, my wife or our team or any other people don't have to manage my emotions. And that ultimately is responsibility. That's what it's about. So if you can do this on a regular basis and understand, then you can begin to control your chaos. You can then actually find fulfillment because you know where you're off and why you're off. And then here's the beautiful part about it. When you understand the peace index, now you have common language to help other people be at peace. It's an easy way to counsel people without being a counselor. It's simply a way of helping them look in a mirror and go, what's it like to be on the other side of you? So my thought for you is simply this. Can you get to the point where you so know yourself where you actually can understand your peace levels and do something about it for the benefit of everyone, and then there's world peace. Thank you.